What's good, everybody? So today I want to talk about a topic that uh, I've been asked about for the past couple of years. Ever, actually, ever since they came out with uh, Ideas Mode in the machine software. And uh, when Ideas Mode first came out, I didn't really use it. Uh, but it wasn't until I got the machine jam uh, when I realized like how powerful a tool Ideas Mode can be when it comes to sequencing. So today I'm going to hit a couple of different topics. I'm going to talk about patterns, uh, how to use them properly, uh, ideas mode, and then also scenes, and how all three of those together you can use to create a beat from start to finish all within machine uh, without having to export into a DAW uh, of any kind. So I've been doing this actually uh, my latest release, my EP, I'll leave that in the description below, shameless plug, from the souls now out on all streaming platforms. Anyways, a link for that is below, but I made that entire uh, EP strictly in machine and with a little bit of help from Audacity. So I'll show you exactly uh, my process. Uh, I'm not saying this is official or I learned this anywhere. It's just kind of like the features that I found and how I use them to create the music uh, that I make in the best way that I know possible. So I'm gonna break all that down. You know what it is. Let's go. So how this is gonna work is uh, I made this beat yesterday and I'm gonna break down this particular beat. Uh, I'll do a little screen capture so you guys can see my process and I'm gonna explain transitions, uh, which is kind of like the hardest part, the most difficult is, is transitions. That's the best part about exporting files and using a DAW is that uh, making transitions in like Pro Tools, for instance, it's much easier because you have the waveforms, you can move them around freely, you can cut and chop and paste them. You can do the same thing in uh, the machine uh, software, but uh, it's a little bit, you gotta get creative uh, in order to, to accomplish transitions properly. So I'm just gonna show you guys the way that I did it. So I'm gonna play this and I'm about halfway through and then I'm gonna go back through and explain um, some of my process. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start out in uh, the ideas mode, uh, which is if you click this little icon right here, uh, you can toggle between the pattern layout and ideas mode. So basically what happens here is in a blank screen, in a new project, should I say, uh, you will see scene one and then uh, you'll have a group, uh, basically just like you know, on the machine, you'll have your different groupings. So what I always usually do when I start out, uh, let me actually delete this. I'll do that. Um, I will load a drum kit into uh, the first group. And a lot of people will 
uh, do it this way. I mean, it just makes sense to have all your drums uh, grouped together rather than spread out across different groups. Uh, but you can double up kits, like if you want to load up another kit, say for instance, you know, I have a couple of preset kits that I made myself. Uh, I don't know, drums at knock volume seven. And uh, so you can have multiple different um, groups of drums. You know, just if I'm looking for something specific that I know is in a certain kit, I'll pull up that kit. And something I'll do is like, if I like this kit right here, Regal Kick, I'll copy it and then paste it into, you know, paste it here. Cause I know like that is um, a kick that I like to use. Something that I also do is, uh, is I always color code my drums. So my kicks are always red, snares are always um, blue. My hi-hats are usually yellow. I don't know why they changed to orange here, but, uh, every, and then all my effects and stuff like that is pink. That's just something that I do uh, to make things easier on me. So I know whenever I'm looking at the machine, what sound that I'm, I'm touching. So let me break down these patterns. All right, so when you, when you first load up, let me, let me load a new project just to make this easier. Then I'll load back into this one and, and explain uh, how I do transitions. All right, so this is how your uh, setup will look um, whenever you load a new project. So what I normally do is I open up a drum kit, you know, just to, it doesn't matter which one it is, just something in there so I have some drums to work with. And so I have the drums in one group and another group. I'll just click this plus button to add a different group. And then that's where I start layering, you know, different sounds that I, I want to mess with. For instance, let's choose, um, Analog Dreams, do a synth pad. That loads up. All right, so I got a synth in group one and I have a drum kit in group A. And so basically what the patterns are is I can experiment with different types of drum patterns um, this one is automatically set out a four bar loop. I can make it an eight bar loop, whatever. doesn't matter. I just need something to start with. So. Let me just quantize just cause. Um, so say. I like that, but I want to try a different type of pattern. What I can do is double click the second slot and it makes another pattern. So let me extend this out, make it a four bar loop, record. So I, now I have uh, two different patterns. Let's add some hi hats. So now that I've got a couple of different types of patterns in here, let me come up with a couple of different melodies. Uh, I'm just gonna use the chord feature just to come up with something quick. All right, simple enough. Now say I like that pattern, I like that progression, uh, but I wanna try something different. So double click here, start a new pattern. 
slow down something else. All right, so now I have two different drum patterns and two different uh, melody progressions. All right, so when you're sequencing your beat inside of a machine, uh, what Ideas Mode does is let you kind of arrange uh, your four bar loop in a way that uh, you like it. So for, for instance, I have scene one here. So if I add another scene, here you see everything's grayed out and I basically will choose whatever patterns I want to include in this scene. So you can see here they're all four bar loops. I can make one an eight bar loop and then that means that this side will double up. So for instance, let me double this pattern. So now it's an eight bar loop, but this four bar drum kit will continue to play over and over again within this eight bar loop. So I don't want to do that right now, but so how, how basically how you lay out your timeline is the very beginning of the song is, which is how I do it is scene one, right? So maybe I'll start it off with no drums at all. And maybe, uh, we'll do this. <laughs> So a place for that little four bar loop for scene one. And then in scene two, maybe I want the drums to come in. Okay. So now you continue to build your song this way by adding more and more scenes as you add more and more groups. And you just basically create patterns that you can mix and match and decide uh, what parts of the song, what parts of the group you want in a particular scene. So when you go to lay it out, what I normally do is I, I will use ideas mode to lay out the entire song in sets of scenes and pick and choose different patterns that I want to include in those scenes. And then I'll go to the arrange mode. I don't even know if that's what it's called, but I'm gonna call it that arrange your side, right click here and select my scene. So there's scene one, add, select scene two, and then it basically just lays everything out like you uh, like you prepared it for in the ideas mode. Let me add a scene three. Let me change the uh, this progression, and then maybe scene four. I'll do that. So then I go back here, select scene three, select scene four. that's basically uh, the process that I use whenever creating uh, songs inside of machine. We'll see what it sounds like. So simple enough, right? So let me go back into my project that I created. I do not want to save this. It's trash. All right, so here in ideas mode, you can see uh, that uh, I have eight bar loops and I have nine different scenes. So basically what I've done is I, I've created different sounds I group these things in my own particular way. These are some like the keys. This is my bass. This is, uh, I don't know, some extra sounds like, oh, I, I wanna put this in there. So let me throw this in here. And then, you know, so just, I have all kinds of different random sounds, but I, I grouped them according to what my brain, <laughs> my brain is working on. So I basically like I can have groups D, E, and F fill out this entire channel grouping 
but um, it kind of gets too cluttered for me. So I like to separate things out into different groups. Uh, but that's just how I do it. So I'll show you here in scene one, you see I have these two patterns selected. Scene two is these, scene three, and so on. It goes all the way down the line where I've mixed and matched uh, my patterns to go for uh, to go towards different scenes that I want and how I want to transition the song. Now the hard part is the difference is uh, the difference between using machine and using a DAW of any sort is um, you you have the ability in a DAW to load in the wave files and you can see visually the waves and if I wanted to transition from say scene one into scene two and I wanted to to do to do use a rise uh, to go from scene one to scene two and then it leads into a crash I can basically blend those two things together on uh, on a timeline and just position them exactly how I want in between each scene inside of a doll but you can't do that in a machine because it's all MIDI so what I've done or what I do uh, if I wanted to build a song specifically in machine, in standalone mode, so for instance, right here, you'll see pattern one, uh, I have drum pattern laid out, right? Let's see, pattern four, I, should, I really should label these, uh, but I'm lazy. Um, so for pattern five, I think this is like the beginning of the song. Basically, I don't have any instruments playing, but I have a transition into the next scene by putting some drums like towards the end of the pattern that leads into it. So I'll show you what it sounds like here. So you can see like the drums come in right at the uh, the end of that pattern and leads into scene two, which has all of my drums. So uh, I also have taken a rise. This rise is from, I believe, uh, one of the machine kits. Um, but basically, here's here's what it sounds like. And I've edited the wave to only play this portion. S means start, E means end. Uh, and the reason I did that is because I wanted the rise only to last for a certain time. And you'll see in the timeline, what I did is I timed it out from this part of the loop to this part is five and a half seconds roughly. And so I would hit the button and watch the wave play until I wanted the drop to happen, and that's where I put the end clip. Um, the, the reason why I do this instead of like creating, because you can cut this out and make it its own wave file. Every time you do that, every time you cut a wave file, you create a new file inside of the folder that's in. So instead of bogging down my hard drive with sounds that I've cut, I just uh, choose the start and end point of the same sample and just leave it how it is. Uh, so, I'll, so that way I'm not adding more files in my folders. And so you'll see here in this grouping, this rise will, will come to an abrupt stop about uh, right before the eight bar loop ends. And then in the drum patterns, you will see that I have one, this uh, grunt. I want the rise to happen all the way up until that kicks in, and then I want that to take, I want the grunt to take that into the next scene. And so let me play it from here. So that's how I do transitions is basically I build the transition into the pattern 
uh, so that I don't have to export this to a DAW and, and make those transitions that way. It's a little bit more tedious. You have to get a little bit more creative uh, in uh, when you're making your patterns in order to do transitions properly. Uh, but it's a way that I use so that I can just stay inside a machine. And um, the last album that I put out from the Soul EP, I, I built it all in machine. And the only thing that I did do, when you export um, a file from machine, there's always like five to 10 seconds worth of dead space at the end of the song, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know why, it just is. So like, if I were to end the song here, it doesn't stop here, it goes, it carries on for like another 10 seconds before the song is done. Um, so there's just dead air. So what I end up doing is I use Audacity, boom, right here. Let me see if I can, uh, I'll load something in here and I'll show you what I mean. So here you see at the end of the song, here's the WAV file and then there's dead airspace. That's just how all uh, exported songs in machine, uh, that's how they all are for whatever reason. And it just ends. I export from machine and then I import the, the whatever's exported out of machine into Audacity and then I'll come to the end here. And basically all I'll do is I'll just Highlight that and hit delete. And then if I want to fade it out, I'll just highlight whatever section I want to fade out. Go to effect, fade out, and then boom. And then I just go to export this file as a wave, and then I send it off for, uh, for mastering. So I hope that was easy enough for you guys to understand. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you have any other tips or tricks or other things that you do. I'm sure other people are coming through the comments uh, looking for different types of solutions. So uh, the more you speak, the more you spread knowledge and the more that you're helping your other fellow machine users out there. Go check out my EP, it just dropped uh, June 4th, which is today right now. Link is in the description below. Thanks for watching guys, peace.